So there in the deep dark treasure hoard, Lena saw three objects. A staff of power that she automatically recognized that could up her ante as the supreme sorcerer that she's always meant to be. Another is an orb of dragon kind that she was later able to suss out in their um, break as they continue on their adventure through this whole myriad of events. The orb of dragon kind um, could attract dragons. And if she was able to overcome the curse, um, could um, bend the dragons to her will someday, one of these days. And she will finally become more powerful than she had been before. But there's one wand that Lena could not figure out. The skeletal wand that had a long vertebrae handle and a magical skull in front of it. It pulsed with this dark power that is beyond her comprehension. And she saw that and thought, I will have to figure this out sooner or later and make it my own. After their adventures and obtaining tokens and um, getting the experience and gold from this um, Doctor Who, they went back to their mansion, settle in for the night, and they all turn off the lights except for one, just Lena. In 5.0, we have to attune to our magical items. Um, that is something they introduced in 4.0, and it was a bit of a lengthy procedure. They shortened that time in 5.0, but just an hour. And so, taking that hour, Lena had to choose which one of these artifacts she had to attune. She already attuned to the Staff of Power throughout that um, adventure. She already had it and claimed it as hers, but she could attune to something else. And she thought, well, since I knew what this orb of dragon kind is, I could attune to it and use it to scry and do divination and all sorts of other cool things with an orb. But as she turned to face this orb, she felt this great resonance, this powerful entity surging from this wand. And dark whispers seemed to come from it. And though try as she might, she could not ignore what it's saying and what's calling out to her. And thus, Lena put her hand on this wand and attempted to attune. What Lena did not know was the wand was a wand of Orcus. If anyone had called it out earlier in the previous adventures, you would be right. If you couldn't call it out because that's not what the Wand of Orcus looks like, but they changed it. And in this video, we're going to be talking about this awesome artifact that is overpowering <laughs> and deadly and really cool and had a lot of history. So let me break it down to you um, as short as I can be for this video. Wand of Orcus, as you could guess, came from Orcus himself, a deity, an evil deity from the Forgotten Realms. In this 5.0 edition, they were able to lay out this artifact in the Dungeon Master's book. And it is as cool and exciting as it is terrifying for any DM. So when my mom saw it, she thought, oh, let's go ahead and slap this here and call it a day and um, see if it gets anything anywhere. Because sadly, our normal DM in this homebrew uh, was stuck. He had writer's block and didn't know where to proceed or where to go 
And we thought, we'll go throw this in there and help you along and give you some sort of plot. And that's what she did. Little did she know the consequences of this artifact. There's two types of consequences. One, the plot consequence. Major plot is like the ring. The ring always wants to return to its master. Same thing with Wand of Orcus. The wand wants to return to its master, which is Orcus, an evil deity that rules the undead in the 113th layer of the abyss itself. And he wants to connect with this wand to continue his ever-climbing goal of being the ultimate top dog of the abyss. And he had been doing it throughout his whole career, and he's not going to stop anytime soon at just 113th level. No, Orcus is going to continue on climbing up to be the ultimate prince of demons. Which I'm sure the Out of the Abyss, um, it covers that whole thing, and that's probably where you get the Wand of Orcus if you so wish to obtain it. However, in this homebrew, um, it's just suitable for us lo low-level characters to find and stumble into this um, adventuring um, kit um, that is lost to society a long time ago and thought it would be great to go ahead and encourage our normal DM to move forward. Until I start looking at this even further, reading up in my own Master's Dungeons Guide, and I had this horrible moment of, oh my god, <laughs> Um, and I realized how horrible this artifact is. And it's set into motions that could not be undone. The problem with the Wand of Orcus is that even though Orcus wants to have this wand and always obtains it and always wants to go back to its master, he keeps losing it. He keeps losing it somewhere in the dark abyss, who knows where. Um, he will put it on his nightstand, roll over, go to sleep, and he'll wake up and it's gone. Like this guy could not keep his stuff. So it will happen to slip through in whatever dimension that it happens to slip through, and this time it slipped through into our world. And we just happened to obtain it in this lost society that happened to be, you know, imploded itself. Not, of course, by this wand of Orcus's, you know, reckoning at all. No, of course not. This wand, <laughs> even though it wants to go back to its master, its master keeps losing it and it's a vicious cycle. So it does its own things. It will try to sow its own seeds of chaos and destruction on its way back to the owner because it is a sentient being of its own, which I completely understand. If you are constantly being lost and you are the ultimate powerful thing that a Prince of the Undead had created, you're going to want to be your own independent wand and make your own choices in your own, you know, artifact life and create your own destruction and create your own name because, you know, who needs that guy anyway? I'm sure that's why you clicked on it in the first place. You want to know more about this one of Orcus, how it, you could tie it into your own campaign. And whether it's suitable for your party, I'm going to say it's not suitable to anyone's party, period. If you have a group of good aligned characters, this is bad news. This is absolutely bad. It's horrible. Don't give it to your good party. Get it away from them. If they try to reach it, um, spritz in the water, tell them no. Bad party. Go away. 
You don't want this dangling in front of their nose uh, with a carrot. This is one of those where it's an in-game artifact item. It's like the one ring. Once they are possessed by the one ring, that's all they think about. It is their precious and they're not going to let it go. And it's going to cause a series of events to occur that will happen to your party that may not let them survive at all. They may not even get to the next adventure quest because they're going to be gobble stomping with all the undead and chaos sown just by this wand. That they won't be able to get to Orcus at the very end game because they were going to be um, the undead themselves handing over. It's like, oh, here, I found your wand again. Oh, it's funny how it happened. So, no, don't. Even if you have an evil party that may be strong enough to handle this wand, I would not do it because then you're dealing with an artifact that has a mind of its own. And you're dealing with this mental manipulation game with the one character who's in possession of it. And if you have an evil party, D, D party, every single evil person in that party wants to have this wand because it is that powerful. And they're going to try to kill each other for it, try to take it for themselves. Or maybe they are simping for, you know, Orcus and they want to take it to Orcus himself or um, to another deity that they love. Maybe to Char, maybe to Loth, you know, who knows? It's just not going to end well. As it did for Lena. So just by plot alone, just by sentience alone, this is bad news. But if that did not deter you, I will read some crap to you from this book. There's a reason why I brought this book here. So I could read crap to you. The ghastly one of Orcus rarely leaves Orcus aside. Bull. The device, as evil as its creator, shares the demon lord's aims to snap out lives of all living things and bind the material plane in the stasis of undead. Orcus allows the wand to slip from his grasp from time to time. Seriously, that's the story. He's writing with it. He did it on purpose. It's not like he can't keep track of anything. And when it does, it magically appears wherever its master senses an opportunity to achieve some fell goal. Seriously, I think he just makes it up as he goes. If you live in the abyss, it's chaos. You go with the flow, you make shit up as you do it. So honestly, he doesn't just sow seed of chaos as an evil person in its evil organized manner and plan this is the abyss it's chaos it just happens some um, crappy crap is going on over there and like death and destruction and all sorts of fun stuff and he's like oh yeah that's probably where my wand is let me go ahead and just jaunt over there and see if it is oh there it is go figure you know i was just taking an opportunity um to do x y and z and bingo yeah, it works. This is how they think. It's not planned. It's not planned. So, anyway, that's me. Made from bones as hard as iron, the wand is top of the magical enlarged skull that once belonged to a hero, a human hero slain by an orcus. The wand can magically change in size to better conform to the grip of its user. Like, if you want it as a wand, you could um, do it that way. If you want it as a golf club, it would extend a little bit further so you could get that nice swing and uh, get that goal where you want it to go. Plants weather, drink spoil, flesh rots, and vermin um, thrive in the wand's presence. We totally skipped this. <laughs> 
we totally did not notice anything at all <laughs> in our adventure. Um, we just shove it in this bag of holding along with the orb of dragon kind, like, you know, those two are going to, you know, be fine. They're going to be buddies. It's, I'm sure they have a lot of tails to swap, you know, while they're stuck in this bag. It's going to be good. It's going to be fine. Yeah, we didn't notice our drink spoiling or, you know, anything like that, but, you know, I'm sure... I'm sure, you know, that's just uh, because we just didn't have the time to really get into this um, artifact. Any character besides Orcus that tries to return the wand must make a DC-17 constitution saving throw. On a successful save, the creature takes 10 D6 necrotic damage. On a failed save, the creature dies and rises as a zombie. So, this paragraph is why attuning to magical items is critical. In 4.0, it was based on your level, if I remember right. And in 5.0, some things are not unlocked unless you attune to it. Um, if you are not attuned to it, it's just simply a golf club that you can use to whack balls and put it over into, you know, the green, if you really want to. Um, unless you attune to it, nothing happens to you. It's just a magical aura that um, the DM could um, um, describe to you. It's powerful. It's evil. Um, all this other stuff, and it's very tantalizing, but unless you attune to it, nothing happens. In fact, if you are successful in attuning to it, you can wield it as a magic mace. So technically, it's not just a wand. It is a melee weapon that you could smash the skulls in, with the skull in. And it grants a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it. And the wand deals an extra 2d12 necrotic damage on a hit. So you could go around whacking people with this, with this type of bonus and that kind of necrotic damage, if you could attune. If you can't, it probably won't have this type of magical bonuses and it'll probably just be a normal mace with normal um, damage that you do with bonking people on the head but once you attune it all this magical stuff flows through and you could do a lot of cool stuff with this thing but the catch-all is the attunement now in 4.0 all you have to say to the dm i like to spend one hour to fondle this item and look into it, caress it, get to know it, take it out to dinner, you know, talk about our life goals and what we want in our relationship. And the DM's like, sure, you're going to have to roll for it. And that's what that rolling entails. Other items that requires attunement, at least in 4.0, wasn't really heavy on it. Um, there was some basic stats, and then you got some bonus stats. So me, still hanging up with 4.0, because that's what I used to DM when I was starting out as a DM for my family. I thought, okay, so we'll just unlock some cool stuff and go on with our lives. Little did I realize this is out of our level. We just hit seven. In fact, I have the character sheet here. Yeah, level seven. A sorcerer with a folk hero background, chaotic neutral, just thought, sure, why not? It'll work. 
nothing bad would happen to her. Because that's what had happened with the staff of power. This... Forgive me, everyone. I don't know where the staff of power came from. Um, I'll suss it out a little bit later. But the staff can be wielded as a magic quarter staff, granting plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls. And while you're holding it, you get a plus two bonus to armor class, saving throws, and spell attack rolls. As a charge of 20, and you regain it daily, etc., etc. Once you're attuned to it, you could unlock all these other spells. So me... Thinking it was no different than the staff of power, went for the attunement. Level 7. Let me tell you what kind of um, DC level that is. If I do a level DC, that's my proficiency plus my modifier. Let me get out yeah. another piece of paper. Yeah, and my proficiency, plus eight. If I try to do a DC, eight plus my proficiency, that's a three. So we're up to 11. And I had a rocking charisma of 19. That's a modifier of four. So that bumps it up to like a DC of 15 per as a sorcerer a level 7 sorcerer that is probably the best DC I could have and this thing is a level 17 um, item and requires that type of role to overcome if I try to level up my character to reach that far, I think I would have to be at least level 10 or higher in order to have the same DC level as this thing. And I'm going to have to double check. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, I can't find it at this time. I'm going to come back as soon as possible, and I'll let you know. 